You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome to In a Perfect World, where cats have all the toys they need. I'm Pamela Merritt from The Way of Cats. Yes, cat toys are a need, one that can vary according to the cat's personality, age, and energy level. And these factors can interact in surprising ways. Cat toys do things for us, too, like amuse the cat when we are busy and show our cat that we care enough to provide for this important need. If we get our cat as a kitten, toys can seem superfluous. For one thing, they are happy with a ball of crumpled paper. For another, they seem more than capable of seeing everything around them as a toy. But this points up exactly why we should give our cat toys that are just for them. How can we teach them that the papers on our desk are important and the papers in our trash can have to be left alone when we are tossing paper balls to them to play with? especially since kittens are not yet capable of great reasoning skills. They need all the help they can get. Giving them their own distinctive toys will help keep them out of our own. We can also observe what our kittens play with as a clue to help us pick out toys they are kind of asking for. Whatever our kittens have a hard time keeping away from, that is what we should provide to them only in a cat-safe version. Their instincts are satisfied. We stop having to thwart them because they will, more and more, choose the right thing to play with and our stuff remains the way we like it. Cat toys are also better suited to this task. Sponge balls bounce much better than paper balls. Wand toys are safer for us because our hand is away from the business end. We really shouldn't hold a toy for the cat to play with without the safety factor. And stuffed animals made for our pets or our babies are sturdier and safer than an item made for decorative purposes. Along with the kitten litter box and dishes, there should be toys and a toy box. Letting cats experience the owning and maintenance elements of the toy box helps with training and their sense of comfort in their new home. The territorial instincts of cats are well served by giving them items of their own to own and use and learn the names of. And yes, every toy should have a name. After all, it's much easier for cats to learn what Bernie means than it is for them to figure out what we mean when we say, that duck with the red feet. By naming our cats toys, we increase their reasoning power give us a shorthand way to refer to certain toys, and give our voice tone more liveliness and emotion, which cats always respond to. Our cats can also use their toys to speak to us. As I've written on the Way of Cats blog, sometimes that toy in our bed or in the middle of the hall or in our shoes is not just an abandoned toy. It's a signal. It's a chance for us to say, oh, look, it's SpongeBob SquarePants, it's Secret Squirrel, it's Fluffy Bird. If we aren't naming our cats toys, we are missing these opportunities for interaction and brain building. We are delighted when we have a cat who knows what we humans call things. It is a skill worth teaching to our cat, and toys are one of the best ways. Because while cats have varying abilities to work with verbal language, they are fluent in body language, the posture, the gesture, the expression, and the moving of objects. Learning to communicate with our cat is a vital element of any happy cat relationship. When we have understanding, we have trust and affection. We have the ability to negotiate with our cats for mutually agreeable behavior and living conditions. And don't forget that our cat's ability to comply with our requests must start with their ability to comprehend what we are saying and asking of them. If we are used to thinking of our cat's toys as something to wear them out with, well, yes, that's a good use for them, certainly. But they can be much more than that. They are toys, but they are also tools. If we use them to communicate and to expand our cat interaction and understanding, we will discover a new joy in our daily interactions and new depths to our companionship. 
By all means, let's wear out the kitten or cat. But if we do it with rituals and teaching moments, we will also be crafting our cat's brain. We should have play sessions with our cat every day. I'm kind of flabbergasted when people tell me they don't play with their cat. And guess what happens if I ask them if their cat plays with their stuff? They say yes, and it's so annoying. All righty then. You can spend time with the cat being annoyed, or you can spend time with the cat having fun. Your choice. Because these people are caught in the misconception trap called, the cat is supposed to obey me. Only they don't. And they really aren't supposed to, either. In my podcast number four, Bad Cat, I explain the hows and whys of cat discipline and how it's nothing, nothing like a dog or a horse or even a llama. These are all pack animals, just as we are. And we all have a button in our brains which, when properly pushed, will compel us to obey. But as I like to say, cats don't have buttons. It's crucial that we develop a close and loving relationship with our cat so we can ask them to do us favors instead. And when they love us, because we show we care by meeting their needs, they are glad to do so. Thus, training our cat will come from our mutual interest in affection and communication. All of these motivations are in full bloom when we create a cat routine around our play sessions. Cats love routines. Do you know why? Because this lets them anticipate and participate. They have a well-tuned sense of time and repeated events that springs from their hunting strategies. They study their prey, learn its habits, and make a point of getting there first and ambushing dinner. By making our play sessions into routines, our cats will look forward to them, and they will also fit better into their true purpose. One you might call... Scratching the itch their instincts send them. In nature, our cats' lives depend on successful hunting, day after day. A large part of their brain is set to urge our cat to perform their hunting routines. They will feel pent up, agitated, and over-energized until they can obey the urgings of their instincts. Opening a can will silence their hunger, but the drive to hunt will remain. Creating a play routine helps our cat know we understand what they want and need, what their brain urges them to do, and also helps our cat feel in control of their environment. If they expect us to play with them at a certain time, and we reliably do, they are happy that what they expected to happen did happen. In nature, our cats lead independent and cat-controlled lives of patrolling, studying, and action. This total package, not just the running after and catching the toy, is what we must duplicate in our home to keep our cats their happiest. While our kittens certainly will play all the time, just try and stop them, our play routines with them will help teach them that we are reliable, we like having fun with them, and it also wears them out. I'm not underestimating the importance of wearing them out. I'm just saying that toys are so much more than that, which is why we have toys and a toy box. Part of the ritual is going to the toy box and taking the toys in and out. It's their toy box. When they are playing with something they shouldn't, we have a place to take them to and something to distract them with. We should make the place where the toys live a part of our cats' lives. Give them treats there, cuddle them when we find them near it, make a fuss over putting toys in and out. As our kittens grow, or as our adopted grown cats settle in, the toy box can become a part of their territory. We can choose a style we will both like, whether it's under the cat tree, in our bedroom, or a lovely part of the living room decor. One glance at it will tell our cats they are home and loved. Next up... We'll talk about the different kinds of toys, depending on our cat's personality. Cats like having things to play with, but cats also like having things. Don't hide. I'll be back with more in a perfect world. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. What if you could protect the life of your cat with something so simple and affordable that you already use every day? 
get ready for the evolution of kitty litter. It's Pretty Litter. Along with all the features you've come to expect from your kitty litter, Pretty Litter's patented and scientific formula will also monitor your cat's health and detect illnesses early while providing industry-leading odor control. Two kitty litters, same cat, same price. But there's one important difference. Pretty Litter reacts to your cat's waste by detecting health issues simply by changing color. And the key is that Pretty Litter detects these issues before your cat shows symptoms of physical illness or pain, likely saving you major dollars in vet bills while protecting the health of your cat. What do you think, little guy? Ready to switch litter? Pretty Litter. Colorful insight into your cat's health. Go to prettylittercats.com forward slash cat 101 or use coupon code cat 101 to get 20% off your first subscription order. Let's talk pets on petliferadio.com. And we're back talking about cats and their toys. Cats always want toys to hunt, but they also need toys for cuddling and for investigating. One toy I consider a must-have is the wand toy. This toy looks like a small fishing pole with a toy on the end of the line. This is an excellent way to make the toy act like prey. It can fly, it can scurry along the ground, it can be flicked behind a piece of furniture to be ambushed and we keep our hands safely away from the action. Two excellent models I highly recommend are the Galky Kitty Tees and the Bird Catcher Pro. Whatever wand toy we use, we must keep caution in mind, as the tip of the wand can be harmful to our cat. Keep them focused on the toy and keep the tip of the wand out of the action field. Like in fly fishing, We can use our wrists to flick the toy here and there. The wand itself should never be in the cat's field of play. When using the wand to drag the toy along the ground, keep the string itself aloft. This will keep the wand tip out of the way of our cat's pouncing and jumping. I have a Galky Kitty Tease that is over 20 years old. The toy needs replacing every year or so. The string can be replaced with the proper weight monofilament fishing line. And the wand itself is fiberglass with a wooden handle, and it's still as good as new. Ironically, the very sturdiness of the toy worked against the inventor, John Galkowitz. In his word, from the kittytees.com website, the large pet chains don't want you to know that there is a cat toy that will last a lifetime. No profit in that now, is there? As their expansion ate up the small, independent mom-and-pop pet stores that I sold to, there went the business. However, he still sells the junior size and the string packs. So click on over there and get the history and maybe make a purchase. As he likes to say, you will believe a cat can fly. My other go-to wand toy is the Bird Catcher Pro. And this is a well-designed toy which can be assembled from two pieces, comes in a pouch for storage, and has a nice little snap and hook system for changing the toy at the end. They also have different toys, which can go on the end, to mimic different kinds of prey. Through my years with the Galky Kitty Tees, I became quite adept at crafting simple toys that had all the right cues to trigger a cat's prey instincts. It's like a bigger version of fly tying for fishermen. It can be a finger-sized length of denim that frays in a way that looks like legs tied up with a length of rubber yarn to add a layered effect, or make one end seem tail-like or head-like. Once it scurries along the rug or acts like it's trapped behind the couch, it's just as good as a big bug to my cats. Wand toys work for any cat. From wearing out kittens to keeping our senior cats sharp, wand toys are versatile enough for any cat situation. They lend themselves to group play, encourage vigorous athletic activity that can make up for a lack of cat tree, and are easily put away. And they always should be. Cats find them so fascinating they will attempt to play with them all by themselves. Always keep a human on the handle end to avoid trouble. Put them in a cat-safe place when we are done. And have more than one. 
One variation I really like has a unique action. The cat dancer is a thick, flexible wire with a simple toy and handle. But the wire allows the prey to flutter like an insect, suddenly leap up, or take evasive maneuvers no matter the skill of the operator, with great safety for both human and cat. If we are looking for a toy that will excite the cats, but can also be safely used by children and cat newbies, Cat Dancer is the one to hand out. Remember that such intensive play can do wonders to discharge the cat's energy, but can also push the cat to keep on playing even if they are getting tired. If we take a break and our cat lies down, or their eyes start rolling in their sockets, or they start panting, put the toy away to signal the end of playtime, and sit quietly to signal the beginning of cuddle time. That's one of the best functions of a good play session. It lets the cat discharge all that sensitive energy and helps them be less reactive in terms of petting or interacting with us. Such events trigger high-intensity emotion. This is the best time to make affectionate overtures to our cat and have them happily returned. No matter what toy we choose, doing a play session and a cuddle session is the right thing to do and the right order to do things in. This applies to any kind of activity with the cat that successfully discharges playful energies that can drive them to bat at or wrestle the petting hand if they haven't been played out. Once we have satisfied the set of hunting instincts, we can safely move to the affectionate instincts. We have shown we care by getting them satisfied that we are meeting their needs. And this is another essential part of our toy routines. Trackball is probably second in my list of essential cat toys. And it's a definite if we have kittens. There's something about whacking that ball and having it come back at them that will keep them playing until, like when RJ was a kitten, they fall asleep with their paw in the track. So they can be ready to go when they wake up. Trackball has gotten elaborate lately, but do start with the basic one track with the scratching pad in the middle. This does double duty, and I found this track to be the smoothest and most reliable. And if they really, really, really love it, pop the ball out when we go to bed. Or you will hear it at 3 in the morning. Sponge balls are the best option in the ball category. We get them by the court for Tristan, our lively alpha, but Mithy the beta kitten finds them irresistible too. Unlike many of the other variations in the ball category, sponge balls are quiet and they don't hurt if we step on them barefooted in the middle of the night. By now, we might be realizing that an important toy quality is how well the toys work for the humans, too. Noisy can be okay if we can control the times and places it comes up. I've wound up banning those plastic balls with bells in them because they are likely to be played with in the middle of the night. They are hard to track down before bedtime because the cats catch on and hide them. Humans always step on them, with or without shoes, and once broken, the pieces are dangerous and the bells are too small for safety. In fact, I don't have much regard for any of those cheap cat toys we find in dollar stores and supermarkets. They easily break, or they don't have the right elements to be interesting. The sole exception might be the stuffed toys, which work well for cats who like stuffed toys. I found that online toys are higher quality, and if they are higher in price, it is more than made up for with increased playability and durability. We have kitten toys that are on their fourth kitten and have proved their lasting appeal. It also means our grown cat can get nostalgic and play with it again now and then, even if they are more interested in sophisticated toys once they grow up. Cats should have a number of toys, which we rotate in and out of use. This is the principle of toy rotation, which helps us keep our cat toys fresh in their appeal. Some cats like variety, some like the thrill of the sort of new, and some like greeting old favorites after an absence. Yet another reason to invest in good sturdy toys is that cats can be hard on their favorites. I have many cat toy reviews on my blog, wavecats.com backslash blog. One review leads to another if you click on the tag reviews at the bottom of each post. Don't run away. 
I'll be back with more tips about living in a perfect world. We'll be right back after a short pause. I love cleaning the litter box, said no one ever. Luckily, there's World's Best Cat Litter, the litter that promises less mess with less litter. Only World's Best Cat Litter uses the concentrated power of corn to quickly trap odors in tight clumps. And quick clumping means you never have to chisel or scrape the box. Less cleanup with less wasted litter? That's a litter bit amazing. Save $2 on World's Best Cat Litter. Visit www.saveonworldsbest.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. And we're back. Talking about cat girls and boys and what they do with toys. Does the cat's gender matter when it comes to toys? No, but their cat type does. The lively, perpetual kitten alpha cat type needs acrobatic equipment and toys they have to figure out and manipulate. The betas love prey and toys that simulate hunting. Gammas love toys with intricate details and glittery surfaces. Often a crackly toy will really make them happy too. This secondary level of toys by cat type are a wonderful way to fine-tune our cat's toy experience. In my own home, my younger cats like the laser pointer, while the older ones have decided it's all a trick and refuse to fall for it anymore. As my cats got older, they like things like treats in the puzzle box and watching a cat channel on YouTube more than rowdy racing around. Although that doesn't mean they ever drop their interest in hunting play. James Bond was in his late teens and would be snoozing on the ottoman, but when the wand toy sailed over him, he would show off his ninja paw and snag it, just to impress the other cats. But we must recognize that as our cats grow in years and lose a bit of their physical power, they compensate by expanding their mental powers. They want things to figure out from the time they mature and right on into old age. Cats sit at windows because this mirrors what they would do in their hunting territory, scouting out the movements of their prey. They don't do this because they are hungry, as they would in the wild. In our homes, they do this for the same reason we watch television. We call it amusement in both cases, but what it really is, in both cases, is expressing our instincts. It's not that humans have instincts for watching television, but we humans are driven by our own survival instincts to study other humans' behavior and figure it out, even if we don't know them and they are simply moving pictures on a screen. Likewise, our cats are driven to study the movements of small, edible creatures, even if these creatures are only digital images on a Chromebook playing their favorite YouTube channel. Either way, instinct has been satisfied. As we nurture our cats into years they would not reach in a harsh competitive environment, We create cats who keep developing their brains. Physical prowess reaches a peak upon maturation and then, very slowly, declines as they age. But their brain keeps on with the observing and figuring out routines, which are so much a part of their nature. How far they can get is a combination of their genetic abilities and how much we support and encourage such behaviors. And we should, because it's fun. I find it baffling that so many people complain that cats are not interactive. They feel ignored. They say cats are aloof and indifferent. They say cats are not affectionate. I say they haven't activated the cat. In my own home, I am greeted in the morning, and the discussion continues even after the new food in the bowls is eaten. I am bid farewell at the door as I leave for work, though usually not by Tristan. That's because he is curled up on my spot on the bed where he misses me when I leave and I'm expected to go in there and tell him I'm coming back and kiss his head. When I do come home, there is much running up and down the cat tree and enthused scratching and if I have a grocery bag, it needs inspection. Our two supervisor cats, RJ and Olwen, report on their respective sectors of responsibility. The evening is full of needed play sessions, much cuddling, and I go to sleep with cats arranged all around me, filling all the side contours of my body under the covers 
like the way foam fill cements a delicate electronic part into a cardboard box. My cats are the opposite of aloof and indifferent. In fact, our days are so full of cats that on those rare occasions when the room suddenly empties, Mr. Way of Cats and I look at each other and say, we've been abandoned. Because our cats are the most affectionate, communicative, companionable, and interactive cats imaginable. What makes them that way? We humans make them that way. If we play with them, if we express the desire to meet their needs, if we signal that we want to be friends, nothing will stop a cat who wants more friendship, interaction, and affection. And that's why I'm talking about toys and play. This is, after all, a need. Toys help us, too. We can use them as focus aids. We can use a toy to attract our cat's attention for an announcement or to distract them from something they shouldn't be playing with. Just tossing out a new toy can pull a kitten out of trouble, and I would regularly use it to get the attention of an alpha who was not hearing me trying to call them, even using their full name. Remember that trick where our parents would use our middle name? I think alphas should all have middle names. Using a toy that rattles or makes a noise can get our cat's attention when all else fails. Because we don't want to yell at our cat, this will get their attention, but in a completely wrong way. They will become frightened of us and want to avoid us. So raising our voice to get their attention is never a good option. Another great use of toys is as security objects. We should give our cats blankies and little stuffed animals to reassure them when times get tough, just as we do for small children and for the same reasons. Object permanence is the concept that objects continue to exist even when their presence is not indicated by our senses. In humans, this is acquired between 8 and 12 months of age. In my kitten, Tristan, it was demonstrated about that time, too. This step is the essential foundation of the memory and the memorization process. It is also part of abstract thought and in developing conceptualization. In both cats and children, a security object can be the link between what they want to feel and the person or situation which helps them feel that way. So when we give our kitten a little toy and our kitten grows up to be a cat, all the while cuddling his or her little toy, we have given a cat a symbol of our love. This can be a valuable object to give to them at various times, to remind them that we care for them, as something to soothe them when we walk out the door, something they enjoy being near as a thing of their own, which resonates with their territorial instincts. We can craft any number of rituals for our cats with any variety of their toys. Another good reason for cats to have toys and a toy box. A toy that has been put away and then comes out again is usually considered a brand new toy. After all, it might have changed while it was gone. Let's see if it acts the same way. Let's play with it. I call this practice toy rotation, and it's an excellent way to help our cat avoid boredom and change things up without constantly buying new toys. The many ways we use our cat's toys are limited only by their imagination and our own. Find out more about cats and toys at wayofcats.com backslash blog. And have they tried one of our specially blended herbal cat toys? I have lots of posts and reviews on this very important subject. Look for items like stinky socks, mouser mix, and placid blend to meld with your cat's personality. Until next time, let's play as much as we want in a perfect world. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.